So over the past few months, I've used quite the handful of different phones, but none of them have had my SIM card in it more than the iPhone 12 mini. What? Yeah, I know. It's it's weird. I'm supposed to be an Android guy, right? Not only that, but a guy that prefers the biggest, baddest Android phones on the market, and I'm supposed to be poking fun at iPhones on Twitter, aren't I? And on top of that, it's got a 64 gigabyte base model that starts at $700. What in the world am I doing? sleep at night knowing that your sim card lies within this poor excuse of an intelligent telephone how could you you've betrayed us all i'm reversing my subscription to you post haste you lack the full interpretation of my immense disappointment in you Okay, so here's the thing. Quick backstory for the heck of it. For the longest time, I had been wanting Apple to bring back that flat-sided design, like the iPhone 4 and 5. My first iPhone ever was an iPhone 4S, and I had messed around with the 5 and the 5S later on, but I fell in love with that hardware design. That was around a decade ago, and I didn't own another iPhone until February 2016 when I picked up an iPhone 6S Plus, the first iPhone I purchased with my very own money. You, watching this video, unless you're my mother, you probably weren't around the channel back then. I made a video about my experience with the phone, Look at this dude. and as embarrassing as that video was, it somehow managed to reach 1.2 million views. Who, me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know where that started, where that came from. <laughs> I, I don't know either. From that point on, I picked up every iPhone successor, the Plus and Max models in particular, but it didn't take long for me to want not only the flat sides back, but a smaller model too. Now, what's funny is that Apple actually ended up dropping the first iPhone SE, a phone sporting the design of the 5S, but with newer internals like the A9 processor, literally a month after I picked up the 6S Plus. But at that specific time, I was all about the newer, larger phone, and I didn't get an SE until a year later. Now, this is why it didn't take me long, because when I got that SE sometime in February 2017, I became extremely hopeful for that design to come back for the flagship models. Needless to say, Apple continued with the rounded edges for some time, lasting all the way up to the iPhone 11 series from 2019. Now I know a lot of people, most people perhaps, didn't care about this like I did, and to be honest, the whole rounded sides thing was just me nitpicking, yeah, it was a preference, I just wasn't a huge fan of how the curves made the phone feel thicker than it actually was, and it didn't look and feel as premium to me. Fast forward to October 2020, Apple announces the iPhone 12 series with flatter, sharper sides, and the 14-year-old Zach in me was very, very happy. Announced within the 12 series was the 12 mini. I thought it was a neat addition to the lineup, especially for those that wanted the latest iPhone, but in a more pocketable package. Then I saw the price and how it replaced the iPhone 11's $700 price tier along with just 64 gigabytes of storage. I said, that's tough, and I proceeded to buy a 12 Pro Max. Alas, the 12 mini grew more and more intriguing as the days went on. And so one day I decided to conduct a little experiment. I returned the <laughs> I returned the Pro Max and completely replaced it with a 12 mini. Yes, I was well aware of what I'd be giving up when making this switch. Obviously, I'd be getting a much smaller display, a much smaller battery, less RAM, a different smaller main camera sensor, no telephoto lens, and I'd be missing out on things like Pro Raw and LiDAR, and I'd get an aluminum frame instead of a stainless steel one. Now on the flip side, it's not like I get some less impressive LCD screen, I get a Super Retina XDR OLED too. Sure, it's not as bright as the Pro Max's, but it is more pixel dense. It's not like I have to settle for some lower end processor and I get the same A14 Bionic chip that the Pros have. I don't miss out on MagSafe or anything, I can take full advantage of all those cool accessories here with this model too. While the main camera sensor is smaller, I get the same ultra wide and front facing cameras that the Pros have too. I get a lot of what makes a high end iPhone a high end iPhone. It's not like the Pro Max takes full advantage of its bigger screen or even its Pro name. I can't fit extra icons and widgets on the home screen. There's no high refresh rate, no USB-C, no faster charging speeds unless you're talking about the two extra watts you get with wireless charging via MagSafe, but the battery is smaller here so it juices up just as quickly. So for me, what I gain out of this switch outweighs what I'm losing. In a way. 
<laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> excuse me. So what could I possibly be gaining? Now, this one's painfully obvious, but it's the user experience. I get a phone that's extremely easy to manage. It's easy to control. It is without question a one-handed device, no hand gymnastics needed. The phone ended up being more of a complimentary piece to the rest of my devices. Not only that, and this may seem a little bit odd, but this phone is kind of fun to hold and use too, thanks to both the footprint and those flat sides I keep talking about. And it also helps that it doesn't hurt as much when the phone hits my face after I drop it while I'm chilling in bed. Speaking of dropping this phone, even though it's easier to hang on to, I'm still fairly clumsy. I did end up dropping the phone onto tile, but thankfully I had a tempered glass screen protector applied from channel sponsor dbrand. The screen protector shattered and the actual screen remained pristine. Also when I'm on the go, I use their grip case, which obviously adds more grip and it protects the phones from even bigger drops. And I'll occasionally switch up the skin I'm using too. Check them out using the very first link in the description. Now, don't get it twisted, I still love larger phones. I'll pick up the S21 Ultra, the OnePlus 9 Pro, even the Xiaomi Mi 11i. All big, high-end devices with gorgeous 120Hz displays, and I'll just be like, wow, this, this is an experience, I love this. For the longest time, I was all about larger phones, and honestly, I still kind of am, but this, this right here, this is where my roots are at. Of course, when I switched, I had to get used to using a phone with a 5.4 inch display, but oddly enough, it didn't take me long to do that, and before I knew it, the phone felt normal? And it was interesting to see how I'd adjust to playing games and how media consumption would be. Now, I don't play mobile games very often anymore, but when I do, and with the types of games that I'd play, the phone gets the job done. There's nothing I'd complain about. I bought the phone knowing the screen size after all, and if I wanted to do more serious gaming, well, there are plenty of other options like a console or a PC. With how I watch YouTube videos on the phone, I don't exactly need a huge display. For a full-on immersive experience, I'd just use my iPad or watch on my computer or my TV. Even the typing experience ended up working out for me overall. Not perfectly, I still miss certain keys that I wouldn't normally miss on larger phones, but I haven't dealt with any cramping or anything like that during long typing sessions. I don't have the largest hands in the world, but they're not tiny either. The phone's size also brought on a lot, and I mean a lot, of, wow, that's a small phone from other people, and well, I can't blame them because we're so far removed from everyone having a phone this size or even smaller, and while I'm used to this now, most people just aren't. So when they see someone using this puny iPhone, it raises the statement, wow, that's a small phone. And I still get questions like, how can you use a phone so small? Or why the 12 mini? as if to say it's such an inferior device. Again, I can't really blame them because, well, the name Mini kind of does imply that it's not as good as something with the name Pro, to the point where one may feel the need to get the Pro because not only is it more expensive, which must mean you're getting so much more, but also because it doesn't hold the same social status, if you know what I mean. Now as far as performance over time is concerned, it's been just fine. In terms of everyday use, it performs as it should. Just about every phone nowadays can run all kinds of games, switch between apps quickly, so on and so forth. But the Mini does provide a super fast and fluid user experience. I do miss having a high refresh rate, having a 120Hz or even a 90Hz panel would have been awesome, and to me it should have been a thing when the price is taken into consideration, but with these batteries, I guess it was best to leave it out until the next model, and plus, I iOS animations are pure butter anyway, so that kind of helps make up for that. Other than that, it's iOS, which isn't a bad thing, don't worry. And it's about to get better with iOS 15, and that's got some really nice, there, there's a motorcycle passing by the house, you probably can't hear it, but I definitely can, which makes me feel like you can, so I'm and that's got some really nice quality of life additions and some other neat stuff packed into it, so that'll be great to see. And having mentioned updates, that's something this phone will continue to get for a good long time. In case you needed a little perspective, my original iPhone 6S, the one I was talking about at the beginning of this video, the one that I bought back in early 2016, is currently running the iOS 15 beta. That phone came out nearly six years ago, so safe to say the 12 mini with that A14 Bionic chip will get the latest version of iOS for the next 300 years. You know what I mean. 
One thing I'm not too happy about is that every once in a while, the phone will lock up completely for about 30 to 45 seconds, and I can't do a thing about it until the phone resets itself. It doesn't happen regularly, and as far as I know, there isn't anything in particular I do that triggers it. It's just random. Another thing I'm not a fan of is having to toggle Wi-Fi off and on every once in a while. Sometimes I'll open up the App Store, it'll start loading, then it'll say it can't connect to the App Store. I'll look up and see that it says I'm still connected to Wi-Fi, but I'll hit the toggle in Control Center, give it another shot, and and everything will work as normal. This actually happens on my iPad as well, and it happened on my 12 Pro Max, 11, and 11 Pro Max, so I'll probably have to mess around with some settings because this never happens on any of my Android devices. I also wish the speakers sounded better. They're not awful, but they do lack a decent amount in the mids and especially the lows. I may even say the $350 Pixel 4a has better sounding speakers. I also dislike how Apple would pretty much rather take away the charging port altogether than give the iPhone a USB-C port. Just, eh, whatever. Battery life has been okay. Not horrible, not great, not as good as the 12 Pro Max's battery, and most certainly not nearly as good as the 11 Pro Max's battery. That still has the best battery life I've experienced in a phone to this day. I mean, you can't expect much. You won't get that same peace of mind. It's a small phone, which automatically means small battery. We know this. Personally, I'm able to stomach the 2,227 milliamp hour battery and what it delivers at least for now. And the thing is, because this is such a small phone, it changed how I use my phone on the daily. I didn't find myself being as much of a power user, and I didn't use it for as many tasks. Performance-wise, it handles power user usage, of course, but on the battery side, that's when it takes the biggest hits. When I'm at home for the day, having to plug in well before I head to bed isn't really an issue. I'm somehow fine with what I get, even during the times I'm out of the house. It's fine. It's when I get back to traveling a lot that it will become more of a problem, and not only that, as time goes on, the battery will deteriorate. That's just how tech works. Now that's where future revisits come into play, so we'll see how it holds up over time, but as of right now, now, battery health sits at 98%. I may not get six to seven hours of screen on time per charge like I do on other devices. It's more like four, maybe five hours, but I've been able to carve out a solid routine where I know what to expect with different use cases, whether I'm out and about or at home or a mixture of both. Getting to the cameras, I think it goes without saying that these are some of the best cameras around and what they push out will continue to hold up very well over time as they have so far. Now, I didn't want the larger pro sensor in the more expensive model to fool me. That's a great camera, do not get me wrong. Pro Raw is real nice and fun to mess around with. It gives you all the creative control. Nighttime portrait shots exist. Zoomed in images look better. In-body image stabilization is nice to have. And LiDAR is dope for a number of reasons, but there are are plenty of tests and comparisons out there that clearly show there isn't an astronomical difference between what you can get on the 12 and 12 mini compared to the Pro and Pro Max for normal use. Differences at all? Yes, for sure. No question about that, especially when you see things in person. Groundbreaking results that completely tower over the mini's cameras? No. Now I do prefer portrait mode results from the Pixel, and what I get white balance and exposure wise may not always be to my liking, but no camera is going to capture shots perfectly to your liking every time anyway. Now when it comes to video capture, this is where the iPhone continues to win. With iPhones already being the best when it comes to recording video, adding Dolby Vision HDR on top of that takes things up a level, which of course is great for everyday use, and it's also great for people that are looking to get into content creation. Overall, I've been very happy with these cameras over time. So in a way, this ended up being that phone I had been asking for for so long. A small yet very powerful iPhone with, say it with me now, flat sides. The 12 mini has an excellent display, great cameras, very solid hardware, solid sounding speakers, the best haptics around, decent battery life, and a processor that's capable of more than what you'd probably be able to put it through. Like seriously, if I had to or wanted to, I could easily edit an entire 4K YouTube video using LumaFusion and the phone wouldn't break a sweat. Now, one of the very unfortunate things about the 12 mini, it's probably the main unfortunate thing other than battery life, is that it didn't sell well at all. Based on the numbers, you could even say it flopped. You could say that's because there may not be much of a market for this phone. And you'd be right, to an extent. There are a good number of people that are loving the 12 mini right now. But you'd be right in saying that there isn't much of a market for this phone, 
at this price. Like I mentioned earlier, the Mini replaced the 11 in terms of starting price at $700, which bumped the 11's successor, the 12, up to $800. I understand that was necessary because the Mini has much better display tech than the 11, and the phone has 5G. But factor in a mere 64 gigabytes of base model storage, and the fact that the much cheaper SE exists, and that leaves the Mini in a very tough spot. And well, it doesn't look like the Mini will be a thing much longer, at least in its current form. From the very little that I've heard, there could be an iPhone 13 mini, and then the mini line could be discontinued in 2022. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Either way, I would love for the mini to stick around. Imagine an iPhone mini pro or something, that'd be pretty sick. So if for some reason it isn't totally obvious yet, I really enjoy this phone. And this is coming from someone who's not only been so incredibly blessed to try out some of the best, most expensive phones around, but it's also coming from someone who dropped a 12 Pro Max for it. Now, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't miss the 12 Pro Max every once in a while for its size, its battery life, and that main camera. But overall, no regrets here conducting this experiment. The Mini isn't better than really any of the other phones in this lineup, but it wasn't supposed to be. It may be pretty pricey, but it's a phone that was made to fit. Fit smaller hands, fit different pockets, and fit different people's preferences. And if you're wondering about me, Zachary Anderson, using an iPhone, especially a tiny one long term, don't worry, I still use my Android devices a lot. This has been a fun phone to use over the past few months. It's a little pocket rocket that doesn't have a long list of compromises. It's held up well so far, and I'm sure it will long term. If you were thinking about picking one up, hopefully this video was able to help you out a bit on your decision. So what do you think of the iPhone 12 mini in 2021? What do you think of the iPhone mini in general? Let's talk about it in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, sub to the channel if you're new, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching.